let me go back. I'm trying to still put the timeline together on 2005, okay? Because you're right. I forgot about Tony Gibson. And also, we're forgetting about Steve Mill. Yep. He was in it. So, like, if I remember correctly, and anybody jump in and tell me where I'm wrong. Okay, so we started off the year with Pete Rondo. You guys are going with my. Uh, you guys got Michael and the Napa team, and all for running. And you guys were pretty – like, you could tell a difference already with the way Michael was running. He just had a pep in his step, too. Yeah. I mean, like, he, he glowed. Um, and then after – I mean, God, it wasn't but was a handful about, of races. Pete was about ten races, eight Ten races, races Pete's <laughs> gone, and they put Steve Meal in, who I think was your spotter at the time, if I remember correctly. He was kind of in a – Something. In a and what was his too. role at DEI? Like, he was a director of something? He or? was like a director of competition. He, okay. handled, he handled the chassis shop for us. And it was kind of like the middleman trying to keep everybody together. Okay. You know. So then at some point we get to Charlotte and there was a big feud. Yeah. Uh, and I would have to think Steve Mills, our crew chief at that time, because I think that would have, uh, you know, been on the back end of the Rondeau switch. And so the the wreck between Michael and Dale, because I just – I have just snapshots of memories of that. Yeah. And the snapshot is – Tony Sr. <laughs> I, I remember when Dale finally pulled into the garage, I said, hey, get to the, get to the hauler. I got to tell you a lot of things. <laughs> I got a lot to tell you because you guys didn't finish the race after that wreck. Was that in the 600 or the all-star race? It was a 600. 600. It was a 600. And, 600. And, and, what it and, 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 and that would have been where things were really boiling over, right? Like yeah, There was a I, lot of animosity between the two teams. Yeah, we, me and him, had, I'd already went and asked him what, his okay. problem was. Okay, so you, you know, had already had the conversation at Richmond. Then yep. Charlotte happens. Then Charlotte happens, and then we're like, and 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 the whole time that this is going on, I, just a little backdrop, is like the fifteen team, which is me. We're starting coal binding. We're we're starting to do that kind of setup. Okay. Well, we're not telling anybody anything about what we're doing. We're keeping it all top secret because we're like, we don't need this to get out. Because okay. I'm looking at it as, after the first 10 races, I'm looking at it as half the people that are on the eight car down there are probably going somewhere else at the end of the year. Okay? So, I don't want to get my secret out of what I'm doing because then it'll be in every... Yeah, Penske. It'll yeah, be Hendrick, everywhere. Everywhere else. So, I'm trying to keep it boxed in a in a box. Don't tell nobody. Put the springs up. Don't tell anybody what doing. Well, there was engineers that were down there on the eight car, and they were like, oh, we know what they're doing. Like, we'll just order it. So I've got the spring company calling me and saying, hey, I know you don't want to tell everybody what you're doing, but your buddies at the eight shop just called and ordered $50,000 worth of springs, and they're not right. Do I just send them? Oh, wow. So I, at that time, I have to make a decision, and I'm like, send them. <laughs> I'm like, screw it. I'm not giving up my secret. I'm like, just send them what they want. Yeah. You know, and, and the guy's like, okay, well, it's not right. And I'm like, I can't help it. I, I'm not giving out my secret. So – and so we're going through all this. We go to 600, and all it was was he was trying to swap. Michael was trying to get out of his way, and they hooked. It was that simple. You can be angry when you're up on a pit box or whatever, but at the end of the day, two of them went for the same spot. They hit together, and they wrecked. But we were, but I've got 15 guys in the pits that just – you might as well throw the grenade in the middle of it. Like, so everybody's pissed, you know, because they're like, he wrecked us on purpose. Yeah, you know, and I'm sitting there going – well, I don't think he'd do that. You know, and I'm just like, I'm just going to leave it at that. But it was on the straightaway. Well, you know, it was, it was on the on front. Stra- it was on the front, but it was still they were going to the same spot. And I was just like, keep trying to keep my emotions in check. Because up to that point, I've been a nutcase. Pops didn't take the same approach. Well, you see, you chased me up in the truck. And I, I think it was you, JR, and there was somebody else. They come running up in the truck, and they're like, are you okay? I'm like, I am fine. Just leave me alone. I'm going to get my book bag, get my car and my truck, and I'm going home. And I said, if I got a problem with him, I'll go talk to him at his house. I mean, that's what I said. Okay. And, I, and, and you looked at me and you go, so you, you were like, are you sure? Like, are you, are you, are you, Cause are, you're, are you okay? And I'm like. Because your dad had just held court. No, you were standing there and you were like, are you sure you're okay? I said, yes. I said, Mike, I said, oh, your biggest right. problem that you have right now is you don't know where Pops is at. That's right. That's what he said. That's what he said. And it's, it's all hit me. It just came back to me because as soon as he goes, your bigger problem is Pops. And he, as soon as I turned around. He says, where do you think he is? Lights, I said, 
probably in the middle of them no, lights. No, no, yeah, yeah. Those lights went ching, 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 ching. And it's like you saw this like bigger than God person standing out there and his arms are doing this you haven't seen and he was evangelizing he was like the holy spirit had got a hold of him and he's sitting here just carrying on and i'm like oh god this is this is where it all unravels right here yeah and sure enough you're just out there racing and and we're sitting there doing all that and then when you came in this was this was so funny because you would have been gone by then dale comes in you know how he is like you can't like you can't have a secret without him going, well, tell me, you know, or something. It's like, hey, come into the hauler. And he's still in the car. I said, before you do all these interviews, because there's going to be, a, there's a ton of people now surrounding the eight car because Pops has just held the press conference of the century out there. Right. And, and Dale's like, why? And I said, just come into the hauler. I got to tell you, why? And I'm like, just get in the hauler. You know, like, come on. Get, like, seriously, get in here. And he's, and I mean, of course, he, so I'm like, Pops just absolutely ran you under the bus, and they are here to ask you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that was it. That, that, that was it. So, like, that was like to me. I felt like that was the bottom. Like that was that felt like the bottom. It was. I mean, I remember. I told all my guys, I'm like, do not say a word. Don't walk by their pits. Don't say nothing. Just go load our car up and get out of here. Don't nobody say a word. And I mean, they're they're like ready. Well, I think the worst thing to happen was somebody took 250 lug nuts and threw them on your lift gate when they walked by or something. And I figured out who that was. And who I was really, it? I think it was Troy. I think it was Troy. Troy Prince? Not yeah. Troy Prince. Man, I think he's Troy. such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Troy. <laughs> Everybody uh, loves Troy. <laughs> he ended up working here. I was like, Troy, Troy done done that. So we went back to the shop. <laughs> and I remember on that Monday, the, the, one of the funniest things that ever happened was we come in there on Monday, and they're like, okay, we're going to all go talk about this, you know. <laughs> and we're standing in the bud, or it had been an apple shop then, but it was an old bud shop. Standing there, Teresa comes walking through the door, her and Jimbo, and they come walking through there. And me and Pops are standing there talking, and she comes through, and I'm like, oh, hell, this is going to be big because she don't come around. And it's like all this stuff just happened, and she walked through this door. This is probably going to be a butt chewing coming right here, you know. So I'm like, okay. She comes over and she says, tells Pops, she said, you got any tape? I need some duct tape. And Pops was like, sure, what color would you like? She says, it really doesn't matter, just just any kind of duct tape. And I was like, okay. Oh, damn. <laughs> so she walks over there and she he says, how big a piece you need? She says, I need one about that long right there, about three or four inches. <laughs> and he goes, okay. And he rips it off and he goes, here you go. What you need that for? She says, can you? She goes, Psh. Right Puts it his. right in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I just need you to be quiet and stay off the TV. Oh my <laughs> That's <God>. hilarious. <laughs> and I busted out laughing because that was the first time. He goes, yes, ma'am. I probably shouldn't have done that. And it was like, but it, she she was the only one that could like trump him. Yeah. You know, but it was like, but I think it was after that, it was like Pocono. Steve was doing everything. Steve would come up there and Steve was like, Man, we got to have both these cars all identical. I want your suspension components. I want your drag link. I want this. I want that. Mm. I'd hand him my setup sheet. Well, still, at this time, I'm still holding my secret. Okay. So I'm just putting down what my springs are. So I'm putting down like 425, 450, 200, 1200. That's, you're fibbing. You're, no, you're, that's you're, what's in it. That's oh, I know. Rate. But you're that's not, the rates. That's the rates. That's the rates of them. But, but it don't say nothing about what the heights of them are or nothing. Right. And so we go out there. And Michael sits on a pole. He's like, man, I ain't sat on a pole in 14 years. I said, well, that's the year I graduated. And I said, so we'll just – congratulations. I mean, he's yeah. still jacked up, you know. And so we're sitting there. I think you run was running terrible. and uh, I got lapped. Yeah. Well, they lapped you twice in the race because before the race, Pops is like, you got to stop this stuff. And I'm like, Pops, I'm not giving away my secret. I'm not doing it. I said, I've worked too hard to figure this out. I'm not going to hand it to them where they can just take it and just throw it everywhere. He's like, well, it's just got to stop. Like, we got, we, got to fi we got to help fix that kid. And I'm like, well, I can do it. I said, you just put everything back like it was, and he'll be fixed. Like, you know. And uh, I had one of my sp springs that I'd been running all year in the cabinet. And he goes, and I remember Steve coming up in there, and he goes, I know you're not telling me everything. And I'm like, Steve, you can go, go over and look at my car. Everything, you measure anything you want to measure. I don't care. 
and he goes, well, we're going to put a 425 and a 475 in the front of this car, and and it better run like yours. And I'm like, okay. And he walked out, and I told Pops, and I said, it ain't going to. And uh, Pops is like, well, you're not going to get him hurt, are you? I'm like, no. I said, his teeth might hurt a little bit when it goes down and bouncing off the cross member a couple of times. <laughs> I said, but I said, it's not going to get him hurt. But I said, he's going to have a rough ride for a little bit. Yeah. And Pops is like, damn you. And I'm like, okay. I said, I tell you what, Pops. And I reached in the cabinet and I pulled the spring out and I set it on the on the ta- on the counter. I said, when it gets so bad that he can't drive it, take that spring, put fifty one and a half rounds in it, and I said, and it'll go. And he goes, for real? And I'm like, yeah. I said, you can just put it in there. And I'm setting up on the box and we're running. We led a bunch. We were sitting there running second or third. We had lapped him twice. I mean, he's terrible. I turn around and look behind me, and Pops is going down pit road with that spring, carrying it. And I'm like, oh, hell, here we go. This is going to be it. In the middle of the race. Middle of the race, they're down there, up on jack stands, changing the right front spring on pit road. I unhooked the front shocks. And they've changed the spring. And so they unhook the front shocks, and they're like, all right, go around. We, you know, don't, don't, don't pace cars coming. So I don't I don't know what they're done. I don't know what they've done under the hood. I just know they lift the hood and then shut it. So I take off down pit road and the pit road at fucking us <laughs> got these giant ass hills in it. And that damn thing takes off up in the air because they got a <laughs> shocks on the front. And the shocks are just doing this under the hood, banging all around, and this thing goes flying up there, and I was like, oh, slowed way down. And I was like, goodness gracious, what have they done? We we're went from bad to worse. <laughs> And I drive around, and then they jack it back up. They put the spring in, hook the shocks up. We lost another lap. And then, uh, but man, I go out there, lined up on the inside, and run with the top five the rest of the day. Yeah, he made up like two laps. And it's like, he got back up there. I don't know what happened to us. I don't know if we crashed or something. Something happened to us. But he ended up making up both laps. And it was the storyline of the weekend. (laughs) And then I go back. I opened the Winston Cup scene on Monday. It says, Dale Jr.'s Magic Springs turned season around. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, volcano. Man. No. Yeah. How would that have got oh, – he must have talked about it. He got out. He goes, oh, yeah, they changed the spring, and it was awesome. Like, it was great. And I have just told Pops, I was like – so then I had to have a meeting of a meeting of a meeting of, like, exactly what was going on. And then at, at that particular time – you know, I think the ball was rolling to do the other deal, but it was like at that time, well, that's when it, it run through the cup garage like crazy. The spring you know? stuff. But that, but, but it also sounds like you guys were now on a quick trajectory to get things righted, right the, right the ship, right? Like yeah, as far well, as getting y'all back together. Because I would forgotten Can you that. believe after what I did at Charlotte that Pops took that spring on his own? Uh, down you know what? Mm-hmm. Anybody else, I wouldn't believe it. That, but you know, I mean, so Pops you, never stopped loving you. I isn't mean, that like, nice to know. Yep. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, yep. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But man, I mean, I got to say, I'm not surprised. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you guys, y'all fought like family, but you never once lost sight of the fact that you're a family. Yeah. And that was what I mean. Lord knows how bad it would have got if that little element wasn't there, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know. I mean, he, he it's like it's like he done what he always done. Anytime we were like. In a dispute, he just put his foot down. That's what we're going to do, mm-hmm. you know. And and I think, and you've said it in here, and I, and we we've all said it. I mean, me and Ty's even sat down and talked about it, you know, about DEI and the way it was. And it was like I think everybody at that particular time had a little bit of arrogance to them, a little bit of immaturity, whatever you want to call it. I don't care, but it's like there was that was a great place to be. It put too much pressure on him. Yeah, y'all lacked a leader. Yeah, you, you lost we, your leader. Yeah, we lost our leader. And at that particular time, he wasn't ready to be a leader. You know, right. he, he didn't want to do it. I, I even asked Kerry Dale, I'm like, will you just come over here and just walk around? Just be an Earnhardt. Just walk around and just act like you own the place. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm like, yeah, you can. Just just play the part. I don't care if they pay you a dime. Just go up there and play the part. I said, I just need an Earnhardt walking around in the building that, that acts like they care about everybody. I said, that's all we need. You know, and then when the whole deal started with the contract and all that, it was just – then it took another level, and it was like, okay, it's intimate that everything's going to go down. And when we went to Hendricks, DEI lasted, what, another year, another two years? You know, because I had actually talked to Darian Grubb. They were starting Stuart Haas, and I went to Darian, and I'm like, Darian, if you've got to start a team, 
go hire Gibson and that whole bunch because that was my old race team. I only took four people out of that team to Hendricks with me. They, you know? That's all they'd let you take. That's all it let me take. But, but hold up. Go back because he just brought up something that I, you and I were talking about last night, Dale, and that was the contract stuff about where you you kind of showed up at speed weeks and said that you wanted 51 percent of yeah. the uh the company yeah we were just kind of curious like <laughs> what was your like what, what was your feeling and all that like when he's now he, he's basically now he and Teresa are going to go onto the battleground and fight over contracts and and now ownership of the company where did that leave you with all that did you I know you guys say well we don't care we just race but seriously though you were in the middle of it well, at the time, I was like, well, how's he going to come up? She's going to have such a number on it that he ain't going to be able to come up with 51. You know, we, the problem is at that particular time, I don't want to talk bad about Teresa because Teresa's done a lot. You know, she's has issues and then she – and other things. But at the end of the day, when she's sitting there, she honestly thought that the, D, that the Dale Earnhardt legacy was so big that she didn't need Dale Jr. And – for for her personal deal for yeah we want to keep dale's legacy but at the end of the day dei can't survive without dale jr every contract every sponsor everything is tied to him at some way or another if it's if it's a sponsor going on the 15 car well they want somehow they want to be tied to dale jr they want to have something that's connected to an earnhardt name so you're sitting there looking at all that and you're like this this ship's taking on water you know and it's like and here, and what I mean by not being bad to Teresa is like, here, here's, here's, my, here's my whole thing on the Teresa deal. Yeah, she, you know, y'all have had issues or whatever, but at the end of the day, when I drove back into that place in 2001 from Dale being killed, she was in that guard shack and waved at every person that walked, that pulled into that shop. That little black glove come out, and I was like, well, damn, if she's here, I'm here. You know, because we done had our yeah. conversation. And two – is I look at it as, okay, she just lost everything that she had. You know, like Dale was her shining knight or whatever. Why would she want to go back to a racetrack? You know, it's like she just lost everything because of that, you know, and it's like, I mean, you got Dale and Kelly, but they're not hers. You know, she's got his tailor, you know, and it's just like I said – why would she even want to go back to the racetrack? For her to keep that business open for another seven years and for her to have to go to the racetrack to where she lost everything, it's got to be hard on her. It's got to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you when you love somebody like that and you lose them there, you don't want to go back. I mean, you went down there for Daytona before we run that baseball car for two weeks just to make sure that your head was right. Yeah. You know, and it's like I look at that with her and I was just like, man, I, yeah, I kind of feel sorry for her in a way. You know, but it was always – we had Teresa standard time. You know, she'd done things on her schedule. Mm-hmm. And because she wouldn't show up to events at the DEI deal, it cost us a lot of sponsorship. It cost this and that. But at the end of the day, I, I can't blame her because I'm like, well, you know, I like – I think that's fair. You know, you Absolutely. Know, you know, I, I miss Dale Sr. every day. Yeah. You know? I feel like – it's funny you, you thought that she would – it's funny that you th- thought that she she was going to put up a number and ha- I would need to pay a number. Because in my mind, and I, maybe I'm the crazy one, when I said I, I'll stay with fi- I'll stay for 51%, that I was going to get 51% outright for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, we were all – yeah. We were all <laughs> thinking – we were all thinking, like, this boy ain't got – I mean, <laughs> I'm like, this boy ain't got that much horsepower behind him yet. He's yeah. good, but I don't think he's got that much. And it's just like, you know, at the time, it's just like, yeah. you know. If she would have said, deal, I'd have stayed. Right. We'd have, we'd have kept on digging, right? Yeah. But um, And I really was ready to, if she ca- I was calling her bluff, if she's going to call mine, that's, that we's going to do it. Yeah. You like that conversation with Tony Urie Jr.? Well, you can listen to the entire interview because the Dale Jr. Download, it's available on all major podcast platforms.